Hi. Today we are going to draw a picture with silhouettes. A silhouette is something that shows the outline of an item or a thing. Um, in the picture we're going to draw today, the silhouettes we're going to use are going to give us a spooky feeling to our picture that we are making. Um, it's a landscape. We're going to have the silhouette of a bat, of a pumpkin, of a cat, maybe a house if you want to put a house in yours. This is a path or a sidewalk that someone would walk on and a tree. These are the, uh, the subjects of our painting or our drawing that we're going to make. You're going to need some paper and um, you can use a pencil to draw and then when we get finished drawing you can use a marker or a crayon to color in your picture. The items that are our silhouettes, the things that look like a shadow of something, um, are going to be colored solid black so that our picture looks spooky and we're going to have behind them um, a sunset or a moonrise that is going to have a spooky feel. So to start with, we take our, uh, our pencil and you're going to draw a line across the middle of your paper. And this is our horizon line. The sun sets back here and this is our ground, this is our sky. We're going to start with drawing a path. And the path is called, um, it's going to give us perspective. Perspective is where something far away looks tiny in a picture. And then when it's bigger, it looks closer to us. So when we draw this path, a tiny piece here, and it gets bigger as it comes to the page, it's going to make it look like our picture is 3D, like you could walk on the path in the picture. So I'm going to start by putting my marker on the line or my pencil on the line and doing a wavy line because I just like wavy lines. I think they're interesting. And then I'm going to come over and do another one. It's narrow and it's going to get wider as it comes to the edge of my paper. So somebody could be walking onto the corner and all the way away. The next thing we're going to add to our picture um, is our tree. We're going to imagine right now that the sun is setting or the moon is rising right here. And our tree limb, our tree is going to be closer to us, and we're going to have a tree limb that drips down between us and the sun or the moon. So right here, our tree is going to be drawn with a long wavy line, just like the tree in our picture here. Okay? The other side of the tree is going to come up and its branches are going to reach out to the far side of our paper. This is a fantastical, fantastical tree that probably couldn't exist in real life. Um, it's going to have like a pointy part right here. That's the end of the branch that comes up and it meets into the trunk of the tree. We can do another one of these. It has kind of a wavy line to it. But this time we can make it look like it's got fingers on the end of this branch by bringing the pin up and then back out and then around. It almost looks snake-like, which makes it kind of have a spooky feeling to it. Another branch. And then I'm going to do one more. And my branches kind of end up looking like spooky fingers to me. Like witch's fingers, maybe. And they're poking out all over. And I'm trying to make them interesting looking. That's why I'm making some branches break off. And this one comes in. So however many fit for you, one, two, three, four, five, six fit for me. It may be four 
big long branches it may be five or six or seven it just depends on how you drew your tree and all of those things are okay now we're going to put um, a bat flying in our sky and depending on how big you draw your bat is how close the bat's going to look to you or how far away it is if it's little tiny over here it's going to look like it's flying far far away and so to draw our bat i'm going to move my paper a little bit to the middle we're going to start by putting a little smile in the sky and that's going to be our bat's ears Remember, if I go too fast, you can always push pause on the video and catch up. You can also run the video back and see what you missed and catch up, okay? We're going to come around. Oh, I'm doing the bat. There's going to be a big bat. My goodness, I forgot what I was doing. So now we're going to do the bat wings. And then this bat's wings have these little, they kind of look like frowns to make the wavy part of the bat wings. And we're just going to kind of put one on each side until we get close to coming together. And when we get close to coming together right here, we're going to put a smile to connect those ends. And that's the little bat belly, okay, for better. I don't know what else to call that little part. Kind of the tummy of the, of the bat. Now down in the ground, we're going to put um, a pumpkin and a kitty cat. And you could put a couple of pumpkins and make it a pumpkin patch. You can put your kitty cat wherever you want. I think I'm going to put my pumpkins over here and my kitty cat somewhere over here. So to draw our pumpkin, we want our pumpkin to look like a silhouette, like it's just the shape of a pumpkin. But if we just drew the shape of the pumpkin solid, it's going to kind of look like a circle with the thing sticking out of the top. Now it could be a tomato. It could be um, an apple. There's no telling what it could be if we do our pumpkin, just like I'm drawing right now with this little ball. It looks almost like a Christmas ornament. And so we can't tell if we drew our pumpkin like this and colored it in to make it a silhouette if it was a really a pumpkin or not. Because it just looks like a ball with something sticking out of it. If we draw our pumpkin where we have space in between each piece, it gives our eyes, it tricks our mind into thinking, oh, that's a pumpkin. That's an apple. Okay, so we're going to draw our pumpkin to trick our mind into thinking it's a pumpkin by drawing them in pieces. So the first piece we're going to draw looks kind of like a hot dog. And then we're going to draw a little bit of a shape around it, but we're not going to touch it. It's only going to come close to it. And then we're going to come back and connect it at the top. We're going to make that same funny shape on the other side. Not going to touch the hot doggy part. And then we're going to come around. And if it touches a little bit, it's okay. It's still going to look like a pumpkin when we're done. We're going to make another shape. And this one ends up being a little shorter. And we're going to try not to touch it. This side's a little bit shorter. Try not to touch it, but if it does, it's okay. And then I'm going to give my pumpkin its stem or handle look. And then I think I'm going to give it even a leaf. So this is just a little pumpkin leaf that I made up. I don't even know what pumpkin leaves look like. But I'm going to guess that's my pumpkin leaf. Okay, if I wanted to, I could draw a couple more pumpkins, just like this one. I'm going to draw this one a little faster. So we get the effect of having a pumpkin patch. And we're going to come back in once we do our pumpkins. 
You can get your black marker or a black crayon or a black color pencil and color your pieces in. I'm gonna, I can go back and do the same to my tree, to the same to my bat. We're gonna color these things in black because we want them to look just like the shape, the silhouette, because that silhouette's what makes them kind of feel spooky and Halloween-y, okay? Almost have it. And so I would do this and I'd do it over here and I'd give myself as many pumpkins, making them smaller the farther away they are and bigger the closer they are to the edge. The next thing we're gonna draw is um, the kitty cat. And I'm gonna put my cat over here on the other side just because I think it makes it interesting. Oh, that's not what I wanted to grab. So the kitty cat's gonna go like this. It's gonna start with a smile again, a little small smile. That's gonna be the cat ears. Then what we're gonna do is come around and make the kitty cat body the kitty cat body and then I'm going to come around with the tail and then he can get colored in solid because it's just the hi today we are going to draw a picture with the silhouettes a silhouette is something that shows the outline of an item or a thing. Um, in the picture we're going to draw today, the silhouettes we're going to use are going to give us a spooky feeling to our picture that we are making. Um, it's a landscape. We're going to have the silhouette of a bat, of a pumpkin, of a cat, Maybe a house if you want to put a house in yours. This is a path or a sidewalk that someone would walk on and a tree. These are the, uh, the subjects of our painting or our drawing that we're going to make. You're going to need some paper and um, you can use a pencil to draw and then when we get finished drawing you can use a marker or a crayon to color in your picture. The items that are our silhouettes, the things that look like a shadow of something, um, are gonna be colored solid black so that our picture looks spooky. And we're gonna have behind them um, a sunset or a moonrise that is going to have a spooky feel. So to start with, we take our, uh, our pencil and you're going to draw a line across the middle of your paper. And this is our horizon line. The sun sets back here and this is our ground, this is our sky. We're going to start with drawing a path. And the path is called, um, it's going to give us perspective. Perspective is where something far away looks tiny in a picture and then when it's bigger it looks closer to us so when we draw this path a tiny piece here and it gets bigger as it comes to the page it's going to make it look like our picture is 3d like you could walk on the path in the picture so i'm going to start by putting my marker on the line or my pencil on the line and doing a wavy line because i just like wavy lines i think they're interesting and then I'm going to come over and do another one. It's narrow and it's going to get wider as it comes to the edge of my paper. So somebody could be walking onto the corner and all the way away. The next thing we're going to add to our picture um, is our tree. We're going to imagine right now that the sun is setting or the moon is rising right here. 
and our tree limb, our tree is going to be closer to us, and we're going to have a tree limb that drips down between us and the sun or the moon. So right here, our tree is going to be drawn with a long wavy line, just like the tree in our picture here. Okay. The other side of the tree is going to come up and its branches are going to reach out to the far side of our paper. This is a fantastical, fantastical tree that probably couldn't exist in real life. Um, it's going to have like a pointy part right here. That's the end of the branch that comes up and it meets into the trunk of the tree. We can do another one of these. It has kind of a wavy line to it. But this time we can make it look like it's got fingers on the end of this branch by bringing the pin up and then back out and then around. It almost looks snake-like, which makes it kind of have a spooky feeling to it. Another branch. And then I'm going to do one more. And my branches kind of end up looking like spooky fingers to me, like witch's fingers maybe. And they're poking out all over. And I'm trying to make them interesting looking. That's why I'm making some branches break off. And this one comes in. So however many fit for you, one, two, three, four, five, six fit for me. It may be four big long branches. It may be five or six or seven. It just depends on how you drew your tree. And all of those things are okay. Now, we're going to put um, a bat flying in our sky. And depending on how big you draw your bat is how close the bat's going to look to you or how far away it is. If it's a little tiny over here, it's going to look like it's flying far, far away. And so to draw our bat, I'm going to move my paper a little bit to the middle. We're going to start by putting a little smile in the sky. And that's going to be our bat's ears. Remember, if I go too fast, you can always push pause on the video and catch up. You can also run the video back and see what you missed and catch up, okay? We're going to come around. Oh, I'm doing the bat. There's going to be a big bat. My goodness, I forgot what I was doing. So now we're going to do the bat wings. And then this bat's wings have these little, they kind of look like frowns to make the wavy part of the bat wings. And we're just going to kind of put one on each side until we get close to coming together. And when we get close to coming together right here, we're going to put a smile to connect those ends. And that's the little bat belly, okay, for better. I don't know what else to call that little part. Kind of the tummy of the, of the bat. Now down in the ground, we're going to put um, a pumpkin and a kitty cat. And you could put a couple of pumpkins and make it a pumpkin patch. You can put your kitty cat wherever you want. I think I'm going to put my pumpkins over here and my kitty cat somewhere over here. So to draw our pumpkin, we want our pumpkin to look like a silhouette, like it's just the shape of a pumpkin. But if we just drew the shape of the pumpkin solid, it's gonna kind of look like a circle with the thing sticking out of the top. Now it could be a tomato, it could be um, an apple. There's no telling what it could be if we do our pumpkin, just like I'm drawing right now with this little ball. It looks almost like a Christmas ornament. And so we can't tell if we drew our pumpkin like this and colored it in to make it a silhouette if it was a really a pumpkin or not. Because it just looks like a ball with something sticking out of it. If we draw our pumpkin where we have space in between each piece, it gives our eyes, it tricks our mind into thinking, oh, that's a pumpkin. 
that's an apple okay so we're going to draw our pumpkin to trick our mind into thinking it's a pumpkin by drawing them in pieces so the first piece we're going to draw looks kind of like a hot dog and then we're going to draw a little bit of a shape around it but we're not going to touch it it's only going to come close to it and then we're going to come back and connect it at the top we're going to make that same funny shape on the other side not going to touch the hot doggy part and then we're going to come around and if it touches a little bit it's okay it's still going to look like a pumpkin when we're done we're going to make another shape, and this one ends up being a little shorter. And we're going to try not to touch it. This side's a little bit shorter. And try not to touch it, but if it does, it's okay. And then I'm going to give my pumpkin its stem or handle look. And then I think I'm going to give it even a leaf. So this is just a little pumpkin leaf that I made up. I don't even know what pumpkin leaves look like. But I'm going to guess that's my pumpkin leaf. Okay. If I wanted to, I could draw a couple more pumpkins just like this one. I'm going to draw this one a little faster. So we get the effect of having a pumpkin patch. And we're gonna come back in once we do our pumpkins. You can get your black marker or a black crayon or a black color pencil and color your pieces in. I'm gonna, I can go back and do the same to my tree, to the same to my bat. We're gonna color these things in black because we want them to look just like the shape, the silhouette, because that silhouette's what makes them kind of feel spooky and Halloweeny. Okay. Almost have it. And so I would do this and I'd do it over here and I'd give myself as many pumpkins, making them smaller the farther away they are and bigger the closer they are to the edge. The next thing we're going to draw is um, the kitty cat and I'm going to put my cat over here on the other side just because I think it makes it interesting Oh, that's not what I wanted to grab So the kitty cat's gonna go like this. It's gonna start With a smile again a little small smile. That's gonna be the cat ears Then, what we're going to do is come around and make the kitty cat body. The kitty cat body. And then I'm going to come around with the tail. And then he can get colored in solid because it's just the shape of the kitty cat. We don't know anything about him because he's the sun is way over here and he's looking at the sunset or the sunrise or the moon in the sky. And so he's all sitting in shadow and we can't really see what he looks like. Now this cat has a really long tail, evidently. Um, if I wanted to make him look a little bit bigger, let's make his body a little bigger. I'm going to grow his ears and color this part in and maybe make him fit his tail a little bit better. <laughs> there we go. Now he looks more like a cat and less like a J. So we've got our elements in here. You're going to get your marker just like I did with the cat and the pumpkins and color in. Like I said, marker, crayon, color pencil, black. It can be any of those things, but it needs to be black. And we're going to color in what we just drew. 
If you want to go one step more difficult, after I color in my path, um, I'm going to add a house to my drawing. And the reason I say it's difficult is because when we start drawing our house, we're going to do some things that are strange to our brain. You're going to go, wait, a house doesn't look like that. But when we do it and then we color in the house, then the house is going to look really kind of spooky, like the light is shining into it from behind. Now I turn my paper upside down and around like that to reach places that might be more difficult for me to reach normally. Um, it just makes it easier to color in what I need to color. And if as you're doing this, like this one's happening for me, my marker is starting to kind of run out of ink a little bit. If you need to stop the video and put the cap on your marker and let it rest, for a few minutes so you can go walk away and go do something else and then come back in a little bit and push play again and then finish coloring. When you start coloring again your marker will be a little bit darker because it will have rested and the ink will have come back down into the tip of the pen. Of course if you have a crayon you don't have that problem. You can just keep coloring and coloring. And a color pencil you might have to stop to sharpen it so if you do that, you stop the video and go sharpen your pencil and then come back. Okay, we're going to play like this path is finished. This is one long walkway. This is how I feel like I walk when I go from my classroom to the school building every day really really long pathway and my marker is starting to get a little weak here so we're gonna play like that's all the way done to the call to the end it's close enough color in your bat color in your tree um, I'm gonna put a house out here because I think it's kind of interesting to give a house sitting my sunrise or sunset or my moon is gonna go right here so I think I'm gonna set my house over here on the other side of the tree and to do my house, I'm going to start by putting a box, just like that. On top of the box is going to be a triangle. We're going to make this house look three-dimensional. And that means it looks like it's like you could kind of walk to it. And to do that, we're going to give it a roof. And we're going to draw another little line like that. And this comes all the way to the ground. And this comes and touches. Okay. Now we're going to add some things to this building that look kind of weird. We're going to add a little bitty stripe right here of white. Oops, that one didn't show up. I'm going to put it underneath it. Put my marker and make a little white stripe right there. Then I'm going to go ahead and draw my door, draw my handle, and then I'm going to color the rest of the front of the building in. And I'm going to leave that little white stripe, okay? So I'm coloring this in. like that with a little white stripe. I'm going to cover, do the same thing with the top, but I'm also going to need leave another little tiny stripe right there on the seal on on the top of the triangle. It's just a little part I'm not going to color in. Just like that. I'm going to put a chimney on my roof and color in my chimney and leave a little white dot. 
I'm going to put a window right here and then color in around it. I'm going to leave a little bit of white. I have to turn my paper to do this. And a little bit of white. And then the rest of it's going to get colored in around the window. And by leaving these little tiny touches of white, it tricks our brain into thinking that there's corners there to this building. So there's the corners to the roof, and there's the corner where this chimney meets the roof. So it creates an optical illusion, a little trick to our brain that makes our brain think things are there when they're not. Just like that. Now, the next thing, we've got our items drawn, play like the tree is colored, play like the bat is colored in. And the next thing we're gonna do is take either color pencils or crayons, whichever you have, and we're gonna start coloring in the sky. Um, I'm gonna do a light yellow. I'm not certain how it's gonna show up, but you'll see my yellow moving, okay? I'm also going to come over here and color my windows in because there's a yellow light glowing from inside my windows. Okay. I'll leave the door white and the rest of it white, but I wanted my window to be yellow. It's kind of cool. And then I'm going to color my sun or my moon. It's your decision what it is. You're going to draw the edge. Let's see, I'm going to imagine it coming through my tree and out the other side, and it runs into my house. And then I'm going to color it in. And this is yellow. I'm not sure how well it's going to show up on the camera. I'm going to add some color, to other colors to it in just a minute. And we're using a crayon or a color pencil for this part, not a marker, because we're going to try to blend some of our colors together. To blend colors, it means you you take more than one color and you put them together like on top of each other and kind of mix them up. And when you do that, you get neat color combinations. Okay? So right now I'm coloring in the yellow I want first. This is my bottom color, the base color, and then I'm going to put some other colors on top of it. Ooh, I'm starting to run out of yellow on my pencil. I have to sharpen my pencil in a minute. All right, so here we go. Got my, the, the sun or the moon. If I wanted to make this the moon, I would take a gray and come in and color some circles on it because the moon has craters and those craters look like the circle. They kind of give a face to the moon. So you could choose to do that if you wanted to or you can pick out some orange and some uh, a different color, a darker color yellow a light color orange. Sorry you're hearing my pencils as I'm pulling some pencils out of my bag. So here's some some different colors of orange pencils that I have. You may have some different colors of orange crayon. I think those are the same. Um, and so I'm just going to pull out a couple of different colors. Here's a darker color yellow than what I had. And I'm going to start adding some color to my to this. I'm going to make this a sun for this picture. It's going to be a sunrise or a sunset. And I'm going to add some extra color to my sun in places. In the center where it's the brightest, I'm going to leave it the yellowest. But then I'm going to add a darker color of yellow around that center part. And just start adding color on top of color. This one's going to be hard to see. But the next one I use, a little more orangey, should start showing up a little bit better as I layer some orange into my sun. Still not a lot showing up yet. 
This is one thing you call experimenting. We experiment when we make art because we're not sure how the colors are going to show up as we start blending things in. So you can really start seeing this orange build up. I'm going to keep adding some orange. And if I color even harder, it's going to get darker as I go out. So I'm barely coloring right here, and then I get darker with it and push a little bit harder as I move out. And then on this very outside piece where I want the sun to look the darkest, I'm going to go to this other color and push it even harder. And by push, I mean like press down and make it dark. So the outside of my sun is going to look really orangey, like a big orange ball in the sky. If I need to, I'm going to come back in a little bit where it's a little bit lighter. I think I want a little more orange in some places. And try to add a little bit more and just play until my sun looks like I want it to and that's called blending when we do that it's a little bit difficult it's um, but it's something that we need to learn to do and then when we do our sky you can color the sky just one color blue or you can add more than one color to the sky um, and color it like it's a sunset with pinks and blues and purples and, and different colors in the sky. Just like what you would see for real different colors in the sky. Um, it's just however you want to draw your sky. So I'm going to probably use maybe these three colors in my sky. Um, and I need to sharpen the end of this one. Give me just a second and let me sharpen my paper. Also got sharpening crumbs on my paper. That's no fun. All right, so now I've got a little bit more purple on here. And so I'm just going to take my purple and add some purple to my sky, run it around a little bit. And then I'm going to come back and add some blues around it. And I still need to come back and color my tree black and my bat black so that they look like silhouettes. Let me do that really quickly. Or as quickly as I can. It's never quick to color something big in. So the bat's done. Now we're going to work on my tree real quick. And you can see my marker starting to dry out again. If, if I only had the one black marker, I would put my cap on it, sit it down, and let it rest. Thankfully, I have a backup marker. <laughs> we'll see if this one starts coloring darker. Yeah, it does. But you might have to give your marker a rest. So we're not doing any shading in the tree. We're keeping our tree and our silhouettes just a flat black color 
solid color because the sun is going down behind it and we are in front of it and we cannot see the details because we're kind of being blinded by the sun. And this is a real thing if you've never noticed this before. That's something maybe you can pay attention to the next time you're outside and it's the sun's going down and it's really bright outside. Um, that sometimes buildings and things that get in front of the light are hard to see and you can't see people's faces and you can't see how what color things are because they look black because the light is behind it. And those are things that you notice as you start, start developing your artist eye and you start looking at the world around you and see what different things you can see. It's like playing I Spy all the time. When I'm outside, I look for things that are different and pretty and unique, things I might not have seen before, like old cars or unusual birds in the sky. You never know what you're going to see outside that could surprise you. I was driving home last week one day and I saw the brightest rainbow I've ever seen. And you know guys, I'm kind of old so I've seen a lot of rainbows. But this was the most brightly colored rainbow I've ever, ever, ever seen. Um, and so that was something that was a different and memorable day. Okay, so now we have everything colored in our silhouettes. We're working on our sky, and I would keep coming back and adding color to my sky until I really get it looking like a night sky or a sunrise, the sunset. And it's just going to take time by coloring and playing and getting it until it looks like what you like, what you see in your head. Okay. I'm going to do just part of it, but I have the whole picture that I should color. But I'm just going to color part of it to show you how it can look. And since we've colored in marker, if my pencil gets on my marker, that's okay. It's not going to hurt my marker. Not at all. So I'm going to put some darker sky out here, outside, farther away. off the page. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. And so now the last thing I can do is think about what kind of ground I want. Um, it's the autumn. It's dry. We've not had a lot of rain. The grass is kind of crinkly and crunchy outside. So if you wanted to color your grass and your ground brown, you could. If you wanted to say, think that maybe there might be some green grass still growing in here. You could add some green in it in some places. So maybe, whoop, that's not green. So maybe I get my green, and maybe there's some green over here closer to the house. Maybe they watered their lawn. Maybe there's some green over here where the pumpkins are growing. Maybe it's not all dead brown grass. Maybe there's some green over here with the pumpkins. So we're gonna we're gonna add some color to our ground. And and however you choose to do it. When you finish your picture, I want you to take a picture of it and send it to me, whether it's in Seesaw or Google Classroom, depending on what grade you're in. This lesson is for everybody this week because I thought since we are having Red Ribbon Week and we're getting to do seasonal things like dress up in costume on Friday, um, that we could do a seasonal fall picture with some spooky elements, but it's not um, a holiday picture. It's just a seasonal picture, okay? with things that we would find in the in the fall 
as bats come out to get their dinners and cats live in our neighborhoods. Okay, so you can kind of see how this finishes up. So this is called a silhouette picture um, because we don't see all of the details because of the sun behind the images. And so we are, are the images are blacked out for us in our brain. And so these are silhouettes. And that's what we have learned today about placement, about um, blending colors, about the um, perspective, how to make something look smaller farther away and bigger closer up. Okay? Y'all have a good week. I'll see you next week.